welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now, today I'm taking you back to early in the reign of Queen Mary I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 8th of August, 1553, 15-year-old King Edward VI was buried in a white marble vault beneath the altar of Henry VII's Lady Chapel in Westminster Abbey. Edward had died on the 6th of July 1553, but the struggle for the throne between the heir he'd appointed, Lady Jane Grey, and his half-sister Mary, plus discussions between Mary I and her ministers over his funeral rites, had led to a delay in burial. It was finally decided that Edward would be buried with Protestant rites, the first use of the English Book of Common Prayer for the funeral of a monarch, and it was Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury, who performed the service. Merchant tailor Henry Machen recorded the funeral procession in his diary. The 8th day of August was buried the noble king Edward VI and 7th year of his reign, and at his burying was the greatest moan made for him of his death as ever was heard or seen, both of all sorts of people, weeping and lamenting. And first of all went a great company of children in their surplices, and clerks singing, and then his father's bedmen, and then two heralds, and then a standard with a dragon, and then a great number of his servants in black, and then another standard with a white greyhound, and then after a great number of his officers, and after them came more heralds, and then a standard with the head officers of his house, and then heralds, Noroi bore the helmet and the crest on horseback, and then his great banner of arms embroidered, and with diverse other banners, And then came riding Master Clarencer with his target, with his garter, and his sword gorgeously and rich. And after, garter, with his coat armour embroidered. And then more heralds of arms. And then came the chariot with great horses trapped with velvet to the ground. And every horse having a man on his back in black. And every one bearing a banner roll of diverse king's arms and with escutcheons on their horses and then the chariot covered with cloth of gold, and on the chariot lay on a picture lying richly the crown of gold and a great collar and his scepter in his hand, lying in his robes and the garter about his leg and a coat in embroidery of gold. About the corpse were borne four banners, a banner of the order, another of the red rose, another of Queen Jane Seymour, another of the Queen's mother, After him went a goodly horse covered with cloth of gold unto the ground, and the master of the horse with a man of arms in armour, which was offered both the man and the horse. There was set up a goodly hearse in Westminster Abbey, with banner rolls and pencils, and hung with velvet about. Now, Edward's half-sister, the Catholic Queen Mary I, did not attend and instead had requiem masses sung at the Tower of London for three days beginning on the 8th of August at Vespers. Edward's grave was unmarked until 1966, but his coffin was seen in the 19th century and it was labelled with a Latin inscription which, when translated, read... Edward VI, by the grace of God, King of England, France and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, and on earth, under Christ, Supreme Head of the Churches of England and Ireland. And he migrated from this life on the sixth day of July, in the evening at the eighth hour, in the year of our Lord, 1553, and in the seventh year of his reign, and in the sixteenth year of his age. In 1966, a stone was placed in front of the altar of the chapel, marking his burial site and inscribed with the following memorial. In memory of King Edward VI buried in this chapel, this stone was placed here by Christ's Hospital in thanksgiving for their founder, the 7th of October 1966. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 8th of August 1588, Queen Elizabeth I decided to accept Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester's invitation to visit the troops he'd gathered near Tilbury Fort to guard the eastern approach to London from the expected invasion by the Spanish Armada. 
But why did Leicester invite the Queen to Tilbury? Well, you can find out more in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to, and you'll find that in the description. Now you can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. And by the way, you might wonder where that panting is coming from. I'm going to see if uh, Tim can actually tilt the camera down to Judd, who is incredibly hot and bothered but wants to be near me. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.